Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Have you ever taken the time to read the little plaques at the bottom of trees? You probably should. There's always some interesting things. I'm walking around here in Holidaysburg and got this tree here. He's got a plaque. Let's see what it says. It says, grown from seeds that were taken to the moon. Wait, what? See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. On January 31st of 1971, at 4.03 and 2 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, the eighth crewed mission of the Apollo space program launched for the moon. The mission was a success and became the first landing in the lunar highlands, our third landing on the moon, and the last of the H missions, or missions specifically designed to show that lunar landing was a capability as well as our lunar surface modules were sufficient for lunar exploration. Now, it's important to note that our lunar travels at this time were in jeopardy of being ended, and this launch was initially scheduled for January of 1970, but was put on hold due to the catastrophic failure of the oxygen tank service module on the Apollo 13, which gave cause to abort their mission and return the capsule to home after they did a slingshot around the moon instead of actually landing. The three astronauts on this particular mission were Mission Commander Alan Shepard, Command Module Pilot Stuart Rosa, and Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell. For this video, we will be talking about the Command Module Pilot Stuart Rosa. Stuart was an aeronautical engineer, a pilot and test pilot for the United States Air Force, a NASA astronaut, and a smoke jumper. Yeah, a smoke jumper. A person who's called upon when a wildfire erupts to go up into a plane and then jump out of that perfectly good plane to parachute down to where the fire is and initiate fire suppression actions. When they do these jumps, they are supplied with 48 hours of food, water, and firefighting tools with an expectation of being self-sufficient for those 48 hours. During this time, the Chief of the United States Forest Service of the Department of Agriculture was a man named Edward P. Cliff. Ed Cliff was chief during a time when there was rapid changes taking place in how public forest management was handled and handling the problems that caused the blight across the country during the 1800s and into the early 1900s. When he caught wind that a smoke jumper was going to the moon, he immediately took action to obtain a promotional and valuable resource through NASA to provide an opportunity of awareness for our public forests. That action, well, it was for Rosa to bring some seeds into space. The Forest Service chose Stan Krugman to head up the project of selecting what seeds would be sent to the moon for this experiment. The chosen seeds were five different types of trees, considered the most important trees found natively in the United States. More clarification on what made these five types of trees the important trees is rather elusive. So if you happen to know what made them the important trees to the United States, leave a comment below. So, the five trees chosen were the Douglas fir, the loblolly, or yellow pine, the redwood, the sweet gum, and the sycamore tree. Each seed was sorted, classified, and then sealed in small plastic bags placed in the metal containers. Each of these containers had analog duplicates made that were kept here on the earth for a control. Commander Rosa ended up with more than 2,000 seeds that he placed in his canvas personal kit that remained with him in orbit while he commanded the Kitty Hawk. Unfortunately, the seeds never ended up on the surface of the moon, but they were in space for nine days and one minute, and they orbited the moon with Rosa 34 times. Upon the return to Earth, the seed experiment suffered a failure in procedure. During their decontamination process and while in a vacuum, the seed bags burst and ended up scattering the seeds all throughout the decontamination chamber. While at the Houston facility, Stan Krugman painstakingly collected the seeds and made an attempt to germinate some of them. To everyone's surprise, the seeds broke their dormancy and started to sprout. 
unfortunately, because it was not the correct type of location to attempt the growing of these trees, the sprouts quickly died. After a year, the seeds were disseminated by classification to locations more appropriate to attempt germination. The loblolly pine, sweet gum, and sycamore were sent to the Forest Service Station in Gulfport, Mississippi, and the Douglas fir and redwood were sent to Plackerville, California. The outcome of the germination was to grow or not grow in the seeds showed a nominal growth pattern, meaning the number of trees that started to grow from seeds versus the number that did not grow was within expected numbers. For the case of the redwoods, that was only 20 seedlings growing out of 150 germinated seeds, which after one year, only 17 of the 20 seedlings survived, where the four that died did so due to uh, damping off fungi, all within what was expected and anticipated. As these seedlings reached the point of becoming saplings in 1975, it was decided by the Forest Service to disseminate these trees as well as some root cuttings around the United States to specific state forestry organizations in celebration of the upcoming bicentennial. Because these trees were southern and western species, not all states received trees. Some of the trees were offered and were accepted by Brazil, the Emperor of Japan, and Switzerland. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as the moon trees. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, jump out to the Patreon, and help support this channel. Now, Something important to know is that according to the documents found, it would appear that this experiment was not taken very seriously and it sat on a back shelf. Many of the documents recovered for this experiment have missteps in the process as well as really poor tracking of what happened, when, where, why, and how. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can visit the NASA website and see the dedication page pages to these moon trees where they even have posted all of the notes and documentation of the entire process. Be warned, it's a lot of information and a whole lot of pages. Now, I mentioned bad tracking. Well, the exact number of moon trees given out is unknown. As a matter of fact, on the NASA website I was speaking about, they even request that if you happen to know of a moon tree location that's not on their list, please contact them so they can make a record of its location. That brings us to where I'm sitting right now. I am out front of the Highland Hall in Holidaysburg, Blair County, Pennsylvania, where a sycamore moon tree was planted on May 5th, 1976, and dedicated in the planting ceremony by Carol Joseph Bobco, better known as Bo, an astronaut who piloted the Space Shuttle Challenger on mission STS-6, where we had our first ever walk with the EVA, or extravehicular activity, and commander of both the Shuttle Discovery on mission STS-51D and the maiden flight of the Atlantis on mission STS-51J. Next to us, we have a pedestal that once had a statue named the Pioneer Family, created by Johnstown artist W. Walter Campbell, but the statue was moved to the Blair County Courthouse in November of 2009, and only the pedestal remains. Seeds from this tree have been collected over time and were scheduled to be replanted Arbor Day, April 30th of 2021, in something rather interesting. The planting of these seeds is to happen in a greenhouse. Uh, not just any greenhouse. The seeds will be planted in a greenhouse made from a restored boilerplate capsule of the Apollo mission. What? What's a boilerplate capsule? Oh, the boilerplate capsule is one of literally dozens of exact replica capsules to what was on top of the Apollo mission Saturn V three-stage 22-story tall rockets. The purpose of these boilerplate capsules was for testing. Some in water, uh, some to find a way to deploy the parachutes. Some were even burned in extreme temperatures, mimicking re-entry, and some were just dropped. By using a boilerplate, NASA was able to determine what worked and what did not work, and how to keep our astronauts alive from here to the moon and back again. Many of these capsules were just scrapped, and some found their way into the American life as decoration throughout the states, pure Americana. This one in particular sat on the back lot of T. Scott Campbell's farm in uh, Shenango Township, Lawrence County, Pennsylvania, for well over 25 years, just rotting. 
The capsule was purchased from a junkyard by Dale Perry, former township supervisor of Shenango Township, who kept it on the township's Oak Tree Country Club property and later moved it to the Campbell's farm. Eventually, a space history buff named David Allen from New York contacted Dale Perry and ended up purchasing the capsule for $2,500. His intent was to donate it to the Altoona School District so that students could initiate a restoration of history. And in a beautiful tribute all around, we will now see a perfect reuse of the capsule for the germination and seedling growth of seeds that came from the originally received Highland Hall Moon Tree to be grown in that actual Apollo capsule. If you haven't already, remember to click like on this video and to subscribe for more odd to see stories of who we once were. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.